Welcome back, everyone, to theCUBE's coverage here in New York City at the New York Stock Exchange. The Cube East, it's our studio on the East Coast, opening up a new presence here. Slowly rolling it up, getting ramped up, soon to be full-time in 2025. You'll see a lot more coverage, certainly a lot of local action, local founders, companies, businesses, AI is the top story. Of course, the technology wave is up and down the stack from semiconductors all the way to the top. Of course, Silicon Valley is where our home is and Boston, so connecting Silicon Valley and Wall Street together is what we're going to do. And we got Stuart Wilson here, VP of Operations at Drada. Great to have you. Thanks Great for coming on. You're waiting out in the hallway. You missed your time. <laughs> we're back in. Wall-to-wall -wall coverage on Wall Street. You know, this is where it's at. IPO today. Big day today. Yeah, seriously. So well, talk, glad about to be what, here. talk about what you guys do. Set the table. Take a minute to explain the company uh, mission, vision, what you guys are, status of the company, size. Yeah, absolutely. So Draw is a security compliance automation platform in a, in a one-line summary. Um, ultimately, what we do is we help power GRC teams to manage their compliance programs in one place. Uh, everything from uh, collecting the evidence and monitoring their controls that are important for their business and providing an end-to-end -end, uh, compliance experience to ensure that they're ultimately ready for their audit, whatever those audits may be. So are you guys a SaaS platform? Or do you load software on servers and a data center? What is the consumption piece of the technology? Yes, so we are a software as a service platform. Uh, annual licensing fees uh, is primarily our business model. And which cloud are you guys uh, hosting on? Uh, AWS. On AWS, okay, cool. So you're part of the startup program there? We are. Okay, yeah. how big is the company? Um, we're about 500 employees, yeah. uh, grew about 100% year over year last year, yeah. and uh, we're over 5,000 customers yeah. globally. Not a small company, not a startup, certainly no. growing <laughs> here in the global partner program, yeah. not the global startup program yeah. for AWS. Okay, so you got a lot of customers. I mean, this is something that, you know, we, Dave and I always talk about compliance all the time. Um, with this AI wave, governance is the huge conversation of which compliance is part of, right? So uh, with AI, the number one conversation that comes up, certainly in the security field, is okay, I need to explain things. Yep. So I need AI to write reports. Okay, check, we've done that. It's not poetry, it's reports. Okay, productivity yeah. gain, check. But now you gotta have traceability and, and, and not lineage, but actually explainability of data supply chain. Yep. So that becomes a big conversation we're hearing. And then never mind all the other checks and balances that are needed on security uh, compliance, SOC reports, pen tests. I mean, how big scope the compliance problem <laughs> opportunity for me because i mean i'm just looking at the security side and see huge never mind other regulated industries you got 5000 customers what's the aperture scope the the landscape yeah and so are you asking how big is the compliance space as a whole or no, more no like what are the core issues that? around what what is what qualifies as compliance give me some examples of how large that the, the nuances are this five zillion things we got to manage over here. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I know security and I know some data center and cloud yeah. stuff, but like what's, what's beyond that? Yeah, so how I kind of think about it is you've got yeah. security and yeah. that's, you know, detecting anomalies, actually remediating those issues, making sure your environment's actually secure. Then you've got the compliance side of it. Uh, and the compliance is making sure that across these important frameworks, SOC 2, GDPR, ISO, HIPAA, et cetera, that you are maintaining compliance against those standards that are readily acceptable by customers who want to work with you. Uh, and so that's kind of the scope in which I would say compliance falls in. And what do you guys target? You guys have a specific industry that you guys are targeting? Yeah, I mean, theoretically, it's any customer out there. Any okay. Anyone who handles customer data or personally identifiable information uh, is going to need to be compliant in some form or fashion at some point. So we've got customers on the small end all the way to some of the biggest yeah. companies out there and across the world. We had a great startup come in here talking about small language models, yeah. SLMs, which we've been using that word. And we have a new research coming out on causal AI, which is around, okay, okay. How, what's the causation of this? So you started getting beyond the reasoning, yep. beyond the reinforced learning. It's like, okay, there's causations, next best action, those kinds of things. And one of the things that comes up all the time is S doesn't stand for small anymore. <laughs> it stands for security, sovereignty. So you have yep. now a data problem now when you start having all this new data being thrown off. Yeah. Because you're consuming data, you're getting more data, so there's more data coming in. It's always been that way. But now you have other issues emerging. What's your reaction to that? And can you do you guys see a clear line of sight of things that you're looking at right now that's different post yeah. Gen AI launch? Yeah, it's a good question. I would say um, new problems are rising all the time with AI. We've got people inside your organization who want to leverage ChatGPT or whatever it may be. You've got companies who want to use it across their different departments for different use cases. Um, I think we're still in the early innings of what are the compliance standards and what are the right frameworks by which you can regulate 
the use of AI in your organization. NIST AI RMF is a framework that yep. you know recently came out that we support on our platform for framework compliance for those who want to use AI in their organization yep. as just one example. Do you guys deal with like encryption and security compliance? Pardon me? Do you, do you deal with encryption and security compliance issues? Absolutely. I mean, that's a lot of the requirements against some of these framework standards is, is your data encrypted at rest? Do you have two-factor authentication across your employee base? And pulling in that information to maintain or to ensure that you are compliant on an ongoing basis is a big value of a platform like Drata. Okay, so let's back up and zoom out for a second because I like, it sounds like you got a good view of the compliance <laughs> landscape. I try how does how does a customer consume the product? Take us through the life of a customer deployment. Um, how do they get started? What's the engagement look like? What's the yeah. couple things they do out of the gate? And then how does that render itself? Do they take all compliance? Do they start chipping away at it? I mean, take us through some of the engagement deployment. Yeah. That's a really good question. I think it depends on the type of customer you're talking to. We've got some customers who don't even have a GRC program. They don't even know where to start. And that's kind of like the sock two in a box. Help me just figure this out. Yeah. Then you've got some who are established uh, GRC programs. They've got SOC 2, they've got all these frameworks, but they're doing it all manually. And so yeah. for those customers, it's about how do we chip away at that workflow? How do we automate a lot of the things they're looking and in fact improve upon it from the standards that they didn't even know were available to them? And then for the earlier customers, it's how do we get them set up with confidence? Yeah. And the analogy I like to use is, let's say you're taking a test and uh, there's two ways you can pass the test. You can get an A plus or you can get a C plus, right? But either way you pass it. And so with Drata, we wanna make sure that you have the tools and the confidence and the trust in us to know that you can get an A plus should you seek that out. Yeah, or it's the same test with different answers every time, <laughs> but Sometimes. the teacher doesn't know the answers are the same, so you just cut and paste the old report <laughs> and put it in. I mean, this manual report thing is a big deal. Yeah. And I wanna get your thoughts on this because I've seen this a lot where um, the agility wave of the cloud came in, uh, a lot of the compliance tests were inadequate. Yep. They were driven for data centers, yep. not for cloud. So it's a SOC report today is good, Yep. and then I just pushed new code yesterday, and now I gotta do it again. Like I, And so I've seen, I've heard from a friend that people just cut and paste the previous report yeah. and submit it and roll the dice. And I would uh, recommend that. <laughs> uh, like. But that's just the labor problem, right? This, yes. th this sounds like you guys take care in, of that. In the reality is, I mean, yeah. I imagine where you're hearing that are large yeah. organizations are ones who have a diverse customer array where they're in different regions and different sectors, uh, different verticals, and there are a lot of frameworks you need to comply with. It's just a lot of manual yeah. work. Uh, and so with a platform like Drata, we're constantly updating those requirements. So as those regulations yeah. get updated, we make sure that that's represented in the platform. So you're always up to date in an ongoing way. And, and one way that I kind of like to think about the evolution yeah. of the space is Wave one, you had, everyone was kind of wild west. You didn't have established frameworks or requirements. Yeah, yeah. Then you had, you know, SOC 2s in the world that came out, you move into wave two, and it was, you got this done every year once. That's a finite period of time. What are you doing for the rest of the nine months of the year that you haven't gone through an audit process? How and then we're in wave three of continuous compliance. Yeah, is that uh, how, your 5,000 customers, what's the pattern around, okay, I got changes to my topology. Because I mean, I mean, Gen AI is just another application. Yep. So AppSec review is coming, but it's yep. always on because it's generating something new every time. Yeah. So how do you manage that, the compliance on that? Is that something where there's audit, there's automation involved? Um, I can see other areas, obviously the workflows can be, you know, obviously the same, nothing changed, something's good. Yeah. Observability comes in, okay, test all that. Yeah, and he, rephrasing the question, are you kind of asking, how do we leverage AI within our product to serve yeah. our customers? How, how, do I, how do you guys handle the generative aspect of AI? Because AI is, Gen AI is just another app feature. Absolutely. So it's just AppSec application review. I mean, um, you know, app, Amazon calls it AppSec review. So, yeah. hey, new app, so we got to put it through the pace. It's like going to the airport. Yeah. You get that TSA pre and clear, you go right through, or you stand in line, take your shoes off and belt and put your laptop on the tray. Yeah. I mean, one's better than the other. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I just want to get on the plane. I don't really go on extend no, a lot. No, you're totally right. I mean, but that's what it's like to go through these reviews, right? Yeah. I mean, and, and so, I mean, so the use of AI within an organization, there are frameworks that help you stay compliant. That's NIST AI, RF that, uh, RMF that we, I just mentioned before. How we're leveraging those tools for our product and for our customers would be a new product, relatively new product called Security Questionnaire Automation. Yeah. So a lot of these GRC teams, they're constantly answering those questions. They're giving out those yeah. questions. And so that is a laborious process. But the answers to those questions can largely be satisfied by the knowledge repository you have in your database and the requirements that are built in the platform. So we can automate the answers to those questions. So how would you explain the core value problem? What's the main benefit of, of your solution for the customer? What do they get out of it? What's in it for them? In one word, automation. Confidence in the automation and compliance of your program all in one place. And what, what technical implementation is needed to do that? 
Well, so it varies on the customer, but uh, depending on your infrastructure stack, we ingest and we have over 100 plus integrations that we work with and growing every single day. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we'll constantly pull in that information so that we can satisfy the requirements yeah, yeah. across those frameworks that you're looking for. So it really varies as a short So you, uh, the way you guys are organized, you have an implementation team. So, I mean, you guys got to integrate. Well, we do. Yeah, Intentionally yeah. with the customer. Yes, yes. And we have an incredible customer organization and we have a, a number yeah. of different teams from customer support to compliance I mean, advisors, I'm sure they're welcoming architects. you with open arms. Right. I mean, I mean, it sounds like it's not frictionless, but at least once someone says, OK, I get it. Yeah. You're going to set me up for compliance reporting, cl client integra integrations for the data I need yeah. to minimize what I know is disruption and bunch of muck that I got to deal with. Yeah. And, and we want to create that frictionless experience. It goes back to the example yeah. I gave before. You can pass a test with a C plus or an A plus. We want to make sure we've got yeah. the platform support. So you can get that A plus every time. Yeah, or not take the same test multiple times or and not too. know the answers either time. <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, this is the key. I mean, I've, I've seen people complain about how their time's being pulled away from their project because yep. some other department needs them to answer something on their side of the test. Yeah. So so now, not only take your test analogy, the person taking the test has to go to ask a friend, yeah. interrupt <laughs> his life and saying, help me exactly. answer this question. Exactly. I don't know what to say. And, and you know, a lot of what you see today are companies that have to go to their engineering team and they have to go get screenshots of you know different parts of the infrastructure yeah. stacked in order to satisfy the requirements. But we can ingest all of that now, especially yeah. in an increasingly cloud native world where we can satisfy all those requirements automatically. We can automate the screenshot taking, if you will, yeah. of those. Uh, and you do, and you got instrumentation in place on the integrations, so that's all current. Yes. So as these reports come out, when correct. If someone's doing a big sales deal, hey, I love your product. You got to fill out this report. Exactly. There's no lag between turning that sales and you just go boom. There it is. And going back to what we were uh, talking about earlier, now we're kind of in what I'll call wave three of compliance uh, industry, where ongoing compliance is important. That's where the trust center and establishing that for others to be able to review. So you guys are printing money, basically. Huh? Uh, business. Business is good. Business is good. <laughs> so what are you guys looking for now? You guys need more uh, go-to-market, more engineers. What's the core business model? What are you guys looking to do now? Put a quick plug in for folks watching because yeah. you, know, you got a great business model. Yeah, you, automate, no. you, you take away the pain and give people freedom yeah. and you just solve a lot of problems. Well, we got a lot of fun stuff that we're working on yeah. right now. Uh, but mm -hmm. I would say in three areas, it's doubling down on the product. And we're maniacally focused on that customer experience and what those teams need. Um, it's doubling down on the customer experience and making sure, to your point, you're set up for yeah. success and there's that frictionless experience uh, for smaller customers, but also for the larger ones. Yeah. Uh, sophisticated workflows tie into that as well yeah. for some of our larger businesses. Uh, and then supporting customers internationally as well, right? Yeah. We have majority of our customers are domestic today, yeah. uh, but we have customers in over 50 other countries and we want to support them in a more dedicated fashion. I mean, your only objection that the way I see it is, is that the getting over the bar of, okay, you're legit, how much time and effort do I need to invest yeah. to get the value proposition locked in. I mean, I'm sure all the personas love you, the CFO loves you because yeah. the risk management piece, Yep. Um, the people who are taking the pain away, they Managing love you. Third-party risk management is a big piece of our <laughs> yeah. product platform. That's right. Yeah. And the people in the jobs like it because it's yeah. like one click. I got, a, I got an agent taking my test for me, he gets A plus every time, why not? Yeah, why, exactly. not why not do that, right? And, you know? and in another way to think school. about it too is uh, go to market teams love it as well. Because yeah. if you think about some of the sales clothes, yeah. What takes a big chunk of the time in a security yeah. in a sales cycle is the security review process. If that would have otherwise, if you could sh shrink that down by seventy five percent, because you're able to answer those questions in a more automated yeah. fashion uh, or a more thoughtful way, it gives you confidence. You're able to shrink that time down and drive that value, so you get faster sales cycle times. So, what's the revenue like model? That. How do you guys charge? Um, you don't have to say the price if you want to say it. You can say it, but like, like, what are you whale hunting in terms of the go to market? Yeah. Are you, or you have an onboard bottoms up? Is it top down? Obviously, you have good stakeholder targets. All love you, but like, is it's a by the drink? Is there a <laughs> professional services uh, short answer is a little bit of all the above. okay i would say it's a mix of inbound and outbound motion from a kind of pipeline perspective yep. um but we're we're we have a variety of different price points that suit our customers needs and align that value as closely as possible right uh, and it's all subscription basis so, and where's hq new york san diego actually san diego. okay cool. yeah, You're in California. We've, we've got uh, about 500 plus employees all across the u.s and in the world now yeah cool yeah well, thanks for coming on the queue. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, put, a, put a commercial out there. Give the final 30 seconds. Give the pitch. Yeah. Uh, if you're looking to manage your compliance program seamlessly, effectively, and all in one place, and automation is something that you value, then you should come talk to us. Drata.com. We'd yeah. love to hear from you. Yeah. Another great example of a workflow 
domain expertise are needed, automation, trust, delegation, you know, getting those loops closed, but also manage and manage and turning them to value. This is theCUBE. We're doing our part for day three of Media Week. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE, here at the NYSC, our new East Coast location, connecting Silicon Valley and Wall Street. Thanks for watching. Thank you.